Greetings comrades, Multi Game Master one reporting in and welcome back to Let's Play 100% Banjo-Tooie. In the last episode, we explored the first and second floors of Grunty Industries and in this episode, we are going to proceed up to the third floor and continue our expedition from there. We're back here on the second floor and if we move along this pipe, we should be able to come to a ladder over there that should take us up to the third floor. So let's climb up it and see what's up ahead of us. In this room, we will see a bunch of giant crates. Man, those crates are huge. I wonder what's in them. Here's a brand new enemy. It's a Nutta. Simply put, it's an animated nut. You can take it out on sight. Now let's make our way to the top of these crates and see what we can find up above us. Gosh, I wonder what kind of materials are packaged away inside these boxes. And why they've been packaged in the boxes. Now in here, inside the boiler plant, we will see a metal plate bolted down with bolts. You can unscrew the bolts with the bill drill. And as you unscrew the bolts, the support chains will start to weaken and therefore will cause whatever they're supporting to become loose. Once you unscrew them all, the chains will be detached, causing the metal plate to fall to the floor. And on top of it, we have Mumbo's pad. Useful, but we still need to find Mumbo, wherever he is in this place. Now let's make our way over here and press this button so that we can open the door to the elevator shaft and therefore use the elevator shaft as means of getting back up to the third floor if we need to. Now real quick, we are going to make our way back into the room with the boxes and see what else we can find. Let's make our way down here and have Banjo and Kazooie split up for just a brief moment. What we're going to do first now that Banjo and Kazooie have split up is have Banjo go back down to the second floor so that we can pick up a battery and find a place where we can place it. So let's go down here and see if we can find it. If I'm not mistaken, it should be dead ahead of us in this room. And it is, but it's guarded by the tin tops. And given that Banjo can't properly defend himself, I have no choice but to get detected by security and run away from the tin tops as I retrieve the battery. But it's okay. The tin tops really aren't that hard to avoid. As long as you keep running away from them, you'll be fine. Now let's see, where else can we go from here? I don't have time for you, governor. Get away. You guys are all over the place. Do the governors act as the security personnel within this whole entire factory? If they do, they certainly are doing a very poor job. Now I'm trying to think for a second. We need a way to get back up to the third floor so that we can find a place to place the battery. If we make our way back to the elevator shaft, yeah, that should be able to work. And the only room that's closest to us with the elevator shaft in it is the one that we're in right now, the electromagnet chamber. So let's make our way up to this catwalk up here and proceed to the elevator shaft. Get out of my way, governor. I don't have time for this. Okay. Now let's climb up to the third floor from here. It shouldn't take us real long to get up there. It probably would help us out even more if the elevators were active. I wonder why the elevators were shut down in the first place. I'll bet those workers had something to do with it. Now if we looked at ahead of us in the boiler plant, we will see a place where we can put the battery. So we're going to get close to it and channel power to the door that leads into the packing room. There. Additional, Additional battery, battery power, power channeled channel to door. door. Access, Access is, is now granted. granted. Now before we head in there, we are going to switch over to Kazooie and have her grab a couple of things in this room. Gosh, these boxes are big. Kazooie, please get up there. Thank you. Leg spring is very useful. On top of here, we will find a Gobo. And there should be an extra honeycomb piece that we can find in this room as well. By the way, here's a new enemy, a Boltoid. And this is a Wash-Up. Respectively, they're animated Bolts and Washers. So you can take them out on site if you want to. Now over here, we will find a Shock Jump Disc Pad inside the crate. And in this one up here, is the extra honeycomb piece that we're looking for. 
Now let's have Kazooie go inside the boiler plant and reunite with Banjo again. We're getting close at this point. Gosh, those governors really are all over the place, aren't they? Okay, let's proceed into the packing room. Hmm, this looks interesting. Twinkly Packing Challenge has been located. Game rules are available if required. Please explain. Twinklies appear from the mesh floor. The packer must collect them before they disappear and take them to the correct loading chutes. Stand on the platform near the chute to load them. Twinklies are heavy, so the more you carry, the slower you run. Blue ones are worth 3 points, green ones are worth 2, and red are only worth 1. Score 40 points to earn a basic Packers bonus. Ready? 3, 2, 1, go! To start off the minigame, I'm going to make my way over to this corner over here and grab a pair of Turbo Trainers because we are going to need them for this minigame. So the objective within this game is simple. Just run around and grab as many Twinklies as you can. The goal score within this minigame is 40 points, so try to grab as many Twinklies as you can. But be advised that as you collect more Twinklies, your speed in this room will start to decrease. So you can see that Kazooie is running much more slower than what she was before. But there is a trick to help you speed along, and that's by using short jumps. So you'll have plenty more time to get the Twinklies. As much as you can, that is. Okay, we're just about out of time. Let me just grab a few more Twinklies, and then we'll go with them into the chute and see if we can match the score of 40 or above. Okay, five seconds. Let's load them in. Red, green, and blue. There we go. We finished the game with 45 points. Barely made it. Packing requirements have been met. A bonus will now be awarded. And after completion of that sort of difficult mini game, we get a Jiggy inside the green chute. Do you, Do you want, want to play, play again? again? No thanks. We'll just take the Jiggy and get moving, because we still have a lot more to do within Grunty Industries. That game really was fun. Sort of difficult, but fun. Okay, now let's see, where else can we go from here? Hi! Again? Sheesh, you guys always get in my way. I'm thinking now that we should make our way back into the room with the boxes. See what else we can find. Maybe we'll find some notes in here. Or something. Oh, let's see. Let's have a look around. Look at everything that's just stuffed away inside the crates, by the way. I mean, we have fragile equipment, big pants and even old rubbish, quote-unquote. And as for the pants, I hope they aren't used. They better be clean. Otherwise, it's just gonna be really gross for all of us. Let's see what we can find over here. Oh, that's gotta be a Jinjo. There's no way that a Minjo can be suspended up here. I stand corrected. Darn you, Minjos! Okay, I believe that's everything that we can find in here, so let's proceed to the fire exit dead ahead of us. You guys would normally think that it would take us down, right? Well, it doesn't. It actually takes us up. And from here, we can reach the fourth floor. And inside, we will see a bunch of metallic barrels and... Here's some kind of crushing noise in the background. I wonder what that is. A door right here. Access denied. Door can be accessed by mechanical personnel only. Oh, come on! First, it's elevators, and now it's doors? Give me a break. Speaking of breaking stuff, I'm taking out my anger on these clangs. Because they're annoying. Let's see what's beyond this passageway. Oh, a tin top generator. There must be a security camera somewhere. Or a spy eye cam, rather. Hey, how's it going? Now that security has been cleared within this place, let's see what we can find here. Here's a switch that will allow us to activate some fly disc pads outside Grunty Industries. We're going to interact with those a little bit later. 
Right now, I just want to see what else is on the fourth floor. So now we can proceed along this passageway over here and see what's set ahead of us. More crates, a conveyor belt, a warp pad, and... Am I the only one thinking that the crushers scream death? I'm not even going to try to beat that. I'm just going to leave the area for now. I guess we'll be checking out the fly disc pads much sooner than expected, huh? But it's a good thing that we're doing that. In fact, the more I think about it, the more I know that we can use the fly disc pads in order to get to the top of Grunty Industries. We also might be able to find a few more of those breakable windows and see what we can find in the rooms. There should be one dead ahead of us, so let's make our way to it while avoiding the polluted water and the Dragoonda and get past the Snapdragon right here. Again, it's very annoying. Now, there should be a fly disc pad up here. Here's one. But before we use it, let's destroy that window up there. There we go. Now we can fly on in and see what's inside. In this room, we will find a Cheeto page. Lucky find for us. Now let's make our way back out. There should be another window on the other side of Grunty Industries that we can break as well. So let's make our way to the other side and destroy it and see what we can find beyond that point. Here it is. And here we go. Now in here, we will see another metal plate that's bolted down with bolts. Let's use the build drill to unscrew them. And when we unscrew them all, that giant crate will fall. So that's one, two, this makes three, and here is number four. The giant box now falls, and we can now use it to reach the skivvy over there. But we're not going to worry about that just yet. Now let's use the fly disc pad and make our way up to the rooftop of Grunty Industries. Along the way, you want to make sure that you have plenty of feathers, otherwise it's not going to be real easy for you to get up to the roof. Gosh, I love this view up here. Who would have thought that the factory would be so big? It even stretches above the forest. And check out that amazing view. Nice sky, cool sunset. I just wish that it wasn't raining. But whatever. Here's a warp disc pad that we can activate. And here's another fly disc pad. And if I recall correctly, there should be a couple of windows up here that we can destroy, such as this one right here. And when we get inside, we will be in the fifth floor. Now let's see what we can find in here. There's a gin gel down there and also a tin top generator. There must be another one of those cameras somewhere. Hey spy eye cam, capture this. Now that security is clear, let's make our way over to the Jinjo on top of this crate. The Brown Jinjo family is complete! They'd like you to have this! It won't be much longer before we find and rescue all of the Jinjos. Soon everything in Jinjo Village will be back to normal. Now let's make our way out of here and back up to the roof. There should be another window up here that we can destroy so that we can find some other things on the fifth floor. Here it is. Now let's go inside. This kind of reminds me of Rusty Bucket Bay, by the way, when you had to smash those windows in order to get inside the buildings. Up ahead is a Jiggy. I'm going to use a Clockwork Kazooie to get this one. Carefully. There we go. Now let's see what else we can find here. Here's another metal plate that's been bolted down. Let's use the build drill on it. Speaking of the build drill, I wonder how Kazooie feels about using that move all the time. I mean, on the one hand, I would imagine that it must hurt her beak. But on the other, I bet she's gotten used to it and she doesn't mind using it. But I don't really know how to read Kazooie's thoughts. So I guess I'll just assume that she enjoys using it and well, it gives her no trouble whatsoever. 
That passageway down there will take us down to the fourth floor, but we're not gonna go down there. We are actually going to check things out on the rooftop. See if we can find anything else. Okay, now where's the fly disc pad again? Oh, here it is, right here. There should be something located in the smokestacks of Grunty Industries. So let's fly our way up there and see what we can find. In this one, we will find an extra honeycomb piece in this puff of green smoke. <coughs> uh, sorry. It was just way too much smoke. Green smoke at that. Couldn't breathe. But I'm fine now. Oh no you don't. You're not even thinking about knocking me off. As I was saying, inside the other smokestack, you'll find nothing in there. So don't waste your time. But below that is a spot where you can blow up a metal slab. And once it's destroyed, we can fly our way inside and see what we can find. That takes us into the boiler plant and it is here where we will rescue another Jinjo. Now we still have more of Grunty Industries to explore and in order for us to comb the whole entire factory, we're going to need Mumbo Jumbo's and Humble Wumba's help with their magic. But we are out of time for this episode, so we're going to save that for next time. So in the next episode, we are going to locate Mumbo Jumbo and Humble Wumba in Grunty Industries and ask for their help with their means of magic. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And until the next episode, this is Multi Game Master 1. Over and out. See you later, comrades!